the Houston Cougars are looking to add talent in the transfer portal. They've already added a couple linemen. Do they need a couple more? What kind of linemen are they looking for? We're going to jump in with experts. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Angers, hit a break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater can step by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way you can lay us on the Cougs in your news feed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It is good to see you again. We are over a 1,000 subscribers, so that means we are going to be giving away this Jared Walker signed jersey to one listener named Ben. Uh, now, there are several people named Ben, and so I want to stress that this Ben is the Ben we're talking about here. So, Ben, find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, DM me wherever you can get a hold of me. We'll get that to you very, very quickly. Thank you. Uh, Ben's been subscribed for a long time and comic time videos for a long, long time. Shout out to Ben for that one. Uh, remember, we're going to be doing giveaways every 250 subscribers. Uh, we're going to try and do big ones around these 1,000 subscriber marks. Uh, so the next big one, I guess, would be like 2,000. We're going to be some, giving away something at, at 1,250 as well. So hit subscribe down below. Comment and like on the videos to let us know that you're entering. And uh, if after talking about offensive linemen some, you are a little bored or can't think of anything or want to talk more about basketball, tell us in the comments down below what your very first pet's name was all right now we have a fun show for you today uh, excited to get to talk to john garcia john garcia is a recruiting expert he'll be helping us break down the guys coming into houston both in the transfer portal and otherwise so without further ado let's jump in and talk to john all right so i'm joined by john garcia a recruiting expert with a bunch of experience look talking about these kind of guys john i gotta ask how are you doing today I'm doing well, doing well. Spring ball is uh, creeping up on us, so which means portal season is is right around the corner. So I'm excited. <laughs> portal season is around the corner. Hopefully, a bunch of movement uh, coming to Houston. We don't want to see a whole bunch of guys going out like we saw initially. Um, but I think it's interesting. I want to talk to you some about big guys because Dana Holgerson has mentioned right after the season ended and his media availability in the off season and then throughout spring practice, like the big adjustment going into the Big Twelve will be linemen he also mentioned that they're aiming to get more veteran experienced guys in the portal than high school guys initially because you gotta be ready to play in the big 12 next fall uh it looks like they've got two guys on campus currently i want to start with um jalen garth as a transfer at the university of texas austin i guess technically transferred you know last fall but was too late to have played last season right. um in your expertise, what do you remember about him in high school? What can, he didn't get to play any at Texas, so we don't have any Texas tape. But what can Houston fans expect out of him? Yeah, I remember Garth from from a couple cycles ago, a big time recruit, four star, all American uh, type of offensive lineman uh, in the state of Texas, and and naturally went to Texas as you mentioned. Um, didn't gain traction there, but uh, the high school tape was really good. I, I remember him flashing movement skills better than you would expect somebody at three hundred pounds to possess uh, easy traction to the second level. Uh, and he had experience playing uh, up and down the offensive line uh, at, as a high schooler. So I thought there was the potential for some versatility there in addition to his great size. You know, I saw Houston list him at 6'5", 305. That's kind of how you draw him up on the offensive line these days. You don't want them to be uh, too heavy. So I do think it'll be fascinating with I would say an extra layer of motivation for him. Obviously, he's got some athletic pedigree, which is why he was a big time recruit in the first place. Didn't work out. We see that happen all the time. And that breath of fresh air, change of scenery really elevates a prospect. But on top of that, Garth has had to wait an extra couple of semesters to get going at Houston. So I do think he's got a lot in front of him from a motivational standpoint. And, and I think the COVID year and, and the redshirt year that he took is, is going to create a lot of eligibility for him going forward there at Houston, whether he's a right tackle or moves inside to guard. I think there's going to be a fit there because athletically 
he's there and, and obviously physically he's progressed enough even without playing to, to be over that 300 pound threshold and still carry it quite well from from what I can tell. Well, and so you mentioned like Houston needs all kinds of spots. And so I like the versatility there. Um, the guy, he's from Texas, state of Texas. People may be more f- familiar with his name. Shamar Hobby Lee just committed. He's from yep. Tampa, Florida and went to FIU. That is not a area or program. Houston fans are super familiar with who he gets in from. Um, P- Florida produces great football. I don't mean to sh- throw any shade there. I, I just, I don't know enough about this kid. I don't know if Houston fans do either. His, Mentioning of Houston on a recruit trip and then committing to Houston kind of came very, very quickly for a lot of us. Um, what do you know about Hobdi Lee? And and he did get a little bit of time, but not a whole lot of time at FIU. Right. You know, I, I think the, the first thing that stands out about him is just the athleticism. This is a guy who played up and down the offensive line at FIU. You know, I know he released some of his best cuts from 2022 and, and he has left tackle and right tackle experience. So I think you know, with uh, with Garth, we're, we're theoretically giving him versatility, but I think with Hadby Lee, there's proven versatility in, in having played both of those bookend spots. But I think where they differ a little bit is that Hadby Lee is a little bit more of a grunt. You know, he's a guy who really wants to work in the run game, uh, comfortable moving laterally, leading pulls uh, or, or screens on the edge so there's some functional athleticism here combined with that o-line nasty that you want so he, he might have been more raw coming out of high school uh, compared to garth who's a little bit more polished plays with better leverage but i think hobby lee has turned the corner uh, over the last year plus there at, at fiu and, and obviously has become a, a more highly coveted athlete to the point where he's going to be able to showcase that versatility at a school like Houston. He also has put on good weight. I think he was uh, pretty light coming out of high school. So having added the requisite weight to compete at the power five level is something that, you you know, group of five players aspire to. That's just something that, you know, that's the chip on your shoulder, right? I was good enough. Let me go show you. Well, in this case, theoretically, I'd be Lee has shown others that he was good enough, and now he's going to get that opportunity. So, again, you like the physical, uh, but you really like the mentality here uh, with with Shamar. He's a guy who uh, wants to get after it, you know, work in a phone booth type of offensive lineman. So a little bit old school, but still obviously has a place in, in today's college football. Both these guys are, are coming in, so they're not the theoretical. Um, like I said, Garth is on campus. Hobby Lee has committed. Um the idea that Houston is kind of changing some of their offensive line dynamics moved on from Brandon Jones into offensive uh, run game coordinator. Iman Yagavi was at Tulane last year. Um, it seems like there is a focus on this power type football. Do Hobby Lee and Garth kind of fit that MO? Is that kind of what you're seeing here? That's what both of them are best at, you know, which which kind of makes you worried. Hey, OK, what about pass protection? What about that third down ability? But I guess that's going to be, uh, you know, the new O.C.'s job or the new offensive line coach's job there uh, coming from two lanes. So, you know, I, I think from a power standpoint, you feel really good about these two guys. Again, with Hobby Lee, you get that versatility, that willingness to go out on the move. And I think with Garth, there's a lot of polish and pop there plays with great leverage for, for a 6'5 athlete, uh, maybe even more polished you know, at, at the uh, beginning of his college career than Hadby Lee is at the end or closer to the end of his college career. So you want to blend both of them and obviously uh, round out their games thereafter, but uh, that's, that's the job for, for Coach Nagabi for sure. All right, let's take a break for a moment to tell you about Built Bar, because if you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need to taste the best tasting protein bar ever built. Trust me, you got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices but don't want to compromise on taste, trust me, Built Bars and Built Bar Puffs are amazing. They're healthy and taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing, you won't be you won't even believe that they're good for you. You've got to try this. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate yes that's right 100 percent real chocolate and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie cookies and cream and more i'm not sure how bill does it but these bars taste like candy bars while maintaining amazing macros and what's even better is they are healthy only 130 calories four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein in most bars and now you don't need to wait to get a box for years we've been talking about going to built.com to get your order but you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club where you can still get specialty flavors at Built.com. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can get a four-bar box of cookies and cream. 
double chocolate bar or coconut puffs. If you go to a Sam's Club and you get a 13 bar box with hip flavors like brownie batter puff and churro puff, trust me, thank me later. Make sure you go, if you don't want to go in person, go to builtbar.com or built.com and ch- tell them that we sent you. I, w- I want to take a step and keep moving because here Dana Holgerson has mentioned they have like numbers next to each of their positions they're trying to fill up. And offensive line, he had the number 16 next to. They want 16 guys on roster next fall. They went through most of spring with 10, right? Um, so they, they have room to add guys even after adding uh, Shamar into the mix. And the big name, at least in the state of Texas, that just hit the portal yeah. is Matthew Wyckoff out of Texas A&M. Now, he is a Magnolia guy that is just outside of what I would call Houston like suburb. So it's just a little bit further out of town, but Houston area for sure. Um, A&M guy used to say to Texas, have to imagine he wants to be somewhat close to home. Houston did offer out of high school, but he was a big time high school recruit and was looking to get in the SEC. It looks like to me. Um, what do you know about Matthew uh, Wyckoff? And what do you know about like what went, what went, I would say wrong, but what happened to him at A&M? <laughs> Couldn't really speak to what happened with Wyckoff at AM specifically, but there was a little bit of mystery w- around his game this spring. Had had the breakout all SEC freshman season as a red shirt this past year, filling in for, for another player, Bryce Foster, uh, who was highly coveted. Uh, loved the versatility, a guy who played again tackle in high school, moves to center at Texas AM and, and really hits the ground running uh, as, as a backup, a versatile backup, and took advantage when he he got his opportunity in 2022 for a really good run-blocking offense, uh, by the way. But then undisclosed injury this spring, kind of quiet. You know, we didn't hear a lot about it. You just sort of assumed, hey, he would feel better, uh, heal up at some point in the offseason and, and and report to fall camp and, and be, you know, the favorite for, for the guy he replaced – to, to start once again at center coming off of what he did in 2022. And then boom, um, surprising news on Wednesday that, you know, an all SEC performer is electing to, to enter the transfer portal. So it certainly draws some eyeballs and, and what really did go wrong. What is the nature of, of this injury? We have seen not to speculate too much, but we've seen instances like this turn into, one medical opinion versus another medical opinion. Could that be a factor? Uh, I'm not sure uh, in this case in particular, but uh, oftentimes, you know, the grass is greener and, and a fresh opinion is a part of that process. Uh, Jalen Phillips comes to mind, medically disqualified back at UCLA, uh, transfers to Miami, first round draft pick of the Dolphins, and he's still, you know, rushing the passer now in the NFL. So sometimes that change of scenery is beyond the X's and O's in particular. But again, don't want to speculate too much with Wyckoff. Uh, as you mentioned, staying close to home would be ideal for him. And Houston is closer to home than just about any other program that would be <laughs> in pursuit here. Uh, and naturally, Nagavi, who we just talked about, you know, Houston area native, has a lot of ties to to this uh, this part of the country. And, and I would assume recruited Wyckoff a little bit, you know, coming out of, of high school. Wasn't going to get him because he was at the group of five but he was probably involved at, at some point uh, naturally closer to home at, at his position. So I do think Houston's a school to keep an eye on here, especially when Holgerson has been so public, as you mentioned. I think a lot of times we see that and, and we could view it as or digest it as, oh, this coach is complaining. We get it. You need bodies. Look, the portal window's opening. You'll figure it out. But oftentimes I view that, especially with experienced coaches like Dana, I view that as a call to recruits, a call to transfers. Like, hey, we've got some room uh, if you're willing to to give us a look. So I do think uh, a a situation like this, a native Texan, a native Houstonian or in that roundabout area back on the market that that has now something more to prove that we don't quite fully understand just yet. I do think that would make sense. And obviously there's a huge need there for Houston. Uh, last question on him because I have other I have another guy to mention, but he's six six three thirty, but was an all conference guy as an interior lineman. Yep. Uh, those don't typically go, to, go together, <laughs> John. Um, what does that tell us about his game? The leverage is phenomenal. Uh, his pop on contact is really good. The movement skills are also really good. You're seeing a bit of a theme. All of these players we've talked about today move incredibly well, both laterally and certainly uh, vertically to get to that second level chip and go. All of all of the modern asks 
from a movement standpoint, uh, those boxes are checked. And you would be hard-pressed to, to find a 330-pounder that moves quite as well as, as Wyckoff does to the point where you're surprised to see him listed that heavy. So the movement skills are, are really strong here. Part of the reason why, again, he was a big-time tackle recruit uh, coming out of high school. And I think the frame pushed him towards – that athletic profile as well. Like you said, if you're 6'6", 300 plus, who can move, you're going to play tackle more times than not. But I do think it was a strength of, of A&M's roster this past season to have him as a reserve and a versatile one at that who can play up and down uh, the offensive line. So now experience inside and out would really help uh, whatever school grabs him next. Another guy that is a giant, um, Bray Walker at Oklahoma, he was recruited there five years ago, had five years at OU, um, listed at 6'7", 360 I'm seeing in some places. Yeah. Um, it, he plays just a couple games in his five years at Oklahoma, but was a five-star recruit many years ago. Um, he's looking like you know a one-year eligibility guy. Uh, is there any shot that a school like Houston has a chance to get this guy almost on a flyer? I mean, it's moving into the Power Five. It's got a right. lot of group of five linemen on the roster. Or, or what's the deal with Bray Walker? Yeah, you talk about uncertainty. There's even more around Bray, right? One of the curious cases, like you said, five-star recruit, All-American, uh, all of the accolades you could want, picks the in-state school, the Oklahoma Sooners, that have churned out offensive linemen towards the NFL, and he just really never gains traction. And he even gave it the old college try after the coaching change and still didn't gain that traction. And I think that was sort of, the red flaggy area of this deal. You know, if there's a coaching change top to bottom and there's still not traction there, I, I do think that is, is probably time to go for Walker. But like you said, it would be a flyer. This is a massive, massive human being that his skill set was always going to be how do you drop that weight down and utilize some of that God given strength, power, and length to your advantage. And, and theoretically, it never really came full circle, but we've seen cases like this work you know, throughout college and even NFL football, Orlando Brown comes to mind, another guy who played at Oklahoma where he's just so massive. But look, he can get, drop that weight, anchor down, and, and make plays in the pass and the run game. Just hadn't quite gotten there for Walker, who's, again, 350-plus is a bit of a different deal as well. So I, I think there's there's potentially a lot going on here, and it would project as a flyer. He's otherwise going to be known, Parker, as this – Five-star bus, one of the most recent five-star busts in, in the sport. So, again, I keep going back to motivational pieces here, a lot in front for, for a guy like Bray Walker if and when somebody does take a chance on him. But that's the thing. You know, you say stars don't matter and stuff like that, and he's going to be one of the faces of that. But that traction early in his life is going to give him some – clout to latch on to at least one more program and give it another go we, we see it happen every single year with transfers or guys that are looking for uh, another chance um, but look his recruitment was pretty singular right you know in-state kid for Oklahoma picked the Sooners early on had some flip chances with some other schools but stuck with with OU in the end sort of as expected so there could be an element of of wanting to explore a little bit more from Walker standpoint in addition to obviously wanting to see the field yeah, it looks like here once he'd committed Oklahoma, the only people that even talked he committed fairly early, it looks like, and the only people that even talked to him were Alabama and Georgia. And those are pretty strong football programs. Everyone saw something in this kid. Um, and it it just hasn't panned out yet. It's just fascinating to see that play out. And frankly, we'd love to see it play out in Houston. Um, obviously one year is not not four or five like he spent in Oklahoma, but it it'd be great. And it's just hard to imagine that a guy that's six seven, three sixty, like with the athleticism of a five star from a few years back, you'd think that there'd be some way to pull it all together, but I hope for the best for Bray Walker, whatever's next that I just, I'd like it to all work out in Houston. Um, that's all theoretical. Houston did not offer him in high school. Like I said, he was a little bit bigger league than we were looking at, at the time. Um, what are you seeing in the transfer portal as far as other linemen? Cause even if all, if, even if both of those guys come, that's only two more and Holgerson's looking more like five. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm I'm curious about Cam Johnson. I mean, hey, you 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 were at Houston already. Understandably, hey, look, offensive line coaching change. He's off at Missouri now. If if that if you're gonna follow, follow. But if not, you know, I'm sure that Gavi's made some phone calls uh, with him finishing up that spring semester on campus to try to figure out how, how to reel Cameron Johnson back in. Because you could argue that 
before uh, Wyckoff hit the portal on Wednesday, Cameron Johnson might be the most coveted uh, transfer uh, among offensive linemen that, that are still available. Obviously started double-digit games, one of the best blockers in, in, in the AAC last year. So I'd kick the tires on that one until the dust settles from Houston's standpoint. But look, a lot of spring games are going down this weekend. There's going to be a lot more entrants into the transfer portal. So that list is going to continue to fill out when, when some of these position battles get settled or feel like they're getting settled within these locker rooms. So there will be more names for Holgerson and company uh, to covet, uh, but they're off to a good start. You know, already reeled in a commitment, as you mentioned, with, with a couple more big names on the way, uh, theoretically. So I do think it's it's a good time to have this need and to be vocal about it because that window is about to go crazy here in a few days. I got to ask on Cam John, because I'd love to have him back. How realistic is it that those guys ever end up coming right back after missing all spring practice like that? Look, I mean, I think missing spring practice does does say a lot uh, in that regard. But, you know, stranger things have happened. There was another reserve lineman who announced the portal intentions and has already said, hey, you know what, I'm going to stay with Houston. You know, so it's it's sort of natural to go through that uh, process when there is a coaching change because uh, you don't know. You know, that's not the coach that recruited you. Uh, that's not the fit that you would like. But on the other hand, you could look at it as a fresh start. Uh, if, it, if it hadn't worked out exactly to your liking. Uh, so, again, um, staying out of out of spring ball would hurt most. I do think for a Cameron Johnson, he would he would get the OK to to accelerate right back up and, and have the opportunity to earn his his starting spot once again there for Houston. Definitely. Cam, if you're listening, we will take you back with open arms. <laughs> John, you're covering recruiting and transferring and all the chaos. I mean, college football, let's turn to a 365-day-a-year gig with all the movement of players. Where can people find you, your work, and talk to you more about what's going on? Yeah, well, of course, throughout the Locked On Network, we're talking ball every day, and uh, we're doing so on online as well. Uh, at John Garcia underscore JR on Twitter is probably the best way to connect. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming today, John. Again, that's John Garcia underscore JR on Twitter. And we'll be talking, uh, hopefully, about some big guys coming in <laughs> later. I promise. All right. Thanks for coming on again, John. Sounds good. Thank you. And that's what we got for y'all today. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Thank you to John for coming on, talking all things Houston Cougar potential <laughs> linemen. Uh, shout outs again to John. That was a big appreciation. He has all kinds of insights all over the place. Make sure you go follow him and follow his content as well. We'll be bringing you the latest on the Houston Cougars each and every day. Thank you so much for tuning in the show, making us your first listen today. We appreciate our everyday listeners tuning in all week. We have tough, tough to talk about, like, uh, you know, Dana Holgerson wrapping up spring football or moving into uh, basketball transfer portal kind of guys, whatever. We'll be wrapping up some more basketball talk on Friday as well. So for the everyday person, make sure you tune in tomorrow and listen to more talk about basketball. Thank you all so much. Remember, Locked On Cougs is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast Network. That means your team every day. Go Cougs.